Hello my dear students I welcome you all to this amazing platform of PW English and to your ignite batch so we are back again with one more one shot of an important chapter that is your surface areas and volume a lot of you people might find this chapter a bit difficult just because it comes with a lot of calculation a lot of formulas and a lot of real life implementations right so we are here to discuss the concepts a few questions regarding those concepts and how you can solve those questions with an imagination of how you can actually implement that in your day to day life in your practical stuff so let's begin with it and let's see that what is our table of content today that what we are going to discuss so we are going to discuss about some specific figures which are there in your paper which are there in your syllabus and frustum is also included in this particular lecture which we are doing right now in case if it is not coming up to your thing so it's okay you can skip so there is just formula thing and few questions for frustum i'll just let you know what is a frustum and how we deal with it so first of all we have introduction to the chapter of course that is needed and why do we need to study the surface areas the volumes and what is it all about the second thing which we have is the cube and cuboid we have hemisphere sphere and cylinder cone and frustum So these are some particular chapters uh, topics which we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. So let's begin with it. So if we talk about introduction to the chapter, all right, that what is surface area? What is volume? Right. So let us learn about the difference. The object having definite shape and size are called solids. So in this particular chapter, we are going to find. the shape basically the surface area the volume the curved surface area you might say or we can say that the total surface area of a particular figure will be calculated all right let me show you a bottle all right we have this bottle okay okay so let's discuss about the topic of surface areas and volumes and the difference between total surface area and the curved surface area before that let me just tell you what we are going to discuss some few things first of all for any solid over here which we are discussing that is a cube cuboid or hemisphere sphere cylinder cone and frustum what all we are going to discuss first we are going to dis discuss the curved surface area all right then we are going to discuss the total surface area and after that we are going to discuss the volume so these three are the particular things which we are going to discuss about these solids in this lecture so what is the difference between all of this so let us again bring back our bottle and see the difference okay so this is my qd bottle and over here if i can see right if i ask you that what all black surface can you see like if i ignore this part of it and if i only show you this part the lower part which you can see right now if i ask you right if i ask you that what is the shape so if i remove this part and just ask this one so this is a particular cylinder right this might appear this bottle might appear like this somewhat this right okay So if I talk about the curved surface area in case of curved figure or the lateral surface area which means the same but not in the shape of the curved figures so if I discuss about the curved surface area of this thing so this include this part which part the one which is I'm revolving my hand around the one which has its curved surface out there so in this figure if I'll show you that what will be included in our curved surface area so this is this part this curve part which we are able to see curve surface area means the part which is curved all right now the question comes that what is the total surface area right what is the difference between curve surface area and your total surface area so curve surface area is this part students and the total surface area is this also included because earlier when i was calculating curve surface area i just calculated this curve part neither this or the top was included so in the total surface area along with this curve portion i will be including this upper circle and this lower circle so in total surface area both of the above circular faces will be included and that will form out what that will form out your 
total surface area now now we talk about the volume right how much water if i talk about this water bottle or if i talk about any of the figure that how much capacity does that container have is the volume for example in this water bottle if i say that this you know can carry 1 liter of water that means 1 liter of water is the volume of this particular object which i am holding so this is the difference between your curved surface area your total surface area and your volume of a particular thing so these three things we will be learning about so let us see that in respect to every figure which we have so first of all we have a cube for example a dice a sugar cube right you might have seen cube rubik's cube all these are example of your cube now if i talk about that if i have to calculate the curve the lateral surface area see in the figure which where there are no curved faces curved faces like in the cylinder we have curvical face in the cone we have curvical face in the sphere we have curved face but in cube cuboid we do not have curved face so in this case we don't tell csa we tell it as lsa lateral surface area all right so basically in a cube for example again if i have some cube over here this is a tissue uh, paper packet this is somewhat of a cube shape if this was folded and fluffed all right so if i talk about only and only what only and only the curved faces so this will include this face this face this face and this face the lateral faces not the upper one not the downer one right and i know that my cube all the faces of the cube are individually square right so if i talk about in this cube i have to calculate this particular face of ours right the second this particular face of ours and the back face the side faces all right no particular upper face and the down face is included so now if i talk about the square students so over here what we have i have to take four faces and we all know that the area of one square is what side into side that is our a square right so side into side will become what a into a and this will again give me what my side of the square now if i talk about the rest of the faces of my square for example if i am calculating the first face right that will be a into a the other four faces will be 4 into a square the other four faces will be 4 into a square all right so 4 into a square will give me what a into a for the first side a into a for the lateral side the left side the right side and the back side so four sides of the square faces will be included so the area of one face is a square so the area of four faces of the square will be 4a square so the lateral surface area will give me what will give me the formula of 4a square all right will give me the formula of what will give me the formula of 4a square now if i talk about the total surface area so apart from this lateral surface area the upper part and the lower part of that will be included right so the upper part and the lower part will be included and that will add upon two more faces for the square so if i am adding two more faces for my square that will find up to what that will come up to what this face and this face so in total six faces are there for this particular cube so six square faces area of one square face is a square so area of six square faces will be 6a square so this will come out to be what your 6a square now talking about the volume the volume will be side into side into side that will be your a cube i hope that this thing is clear with everyone let's move forward now this is a cuboid now cuboid has all its faces as what the cuboid a cuboid has all its faces as a rectangle if we talk about rectangle has a length has a breadth and in the case of cuboid it has what a height imagine your book the book which you are holding mathematics book right this much thick all right so basically cuboid is a figure so lateral surface area for the cuboid which will include this rectangle the other side rectangle and the sides rectangle the one in the front the one at the back the one at the left and the one at the right so these are the four faces which will be included in the cuboid and the lateral surface area for the cuboid will be what 2h l plus b right the lateral surface area for the cuboid will be 2h l plus b the total surface area will be what the total surface area will be your 2 lb plus bh 
plus HL. So the, this will be the total surface area which will include all the six faces of your cuboid. Now talking about the volume. So the volume is again in the case of cube we have side into side into side. Again in this case we have side into side into side but the side is respectively length, breadth and height. So L into B into H will give you what the volume of your cuboid. Talking about a cylinder, I just showed you the bottle, right? So the bottle is an example of cylinder if we ignore, of course, the neck part and the cap part. But if I just remove the cap, it will definitely form a perfect cylinder. See, I hope the bottle doesn't fall. So this is the example of what a perfect cylinder. The curved surface area of cylinder is what? 2 pi RH, the formula where R is the radius of the cylinder. H will be the height of your cylinder. All right. So this will be the radius and the height of the cylinder. Secondly, if I talk about what? The total surface area. Total surface area, see, in the cylinder, the curved surface area is this. For the total surface area, what I have to do in curved surface area, I have to add what? The upper circular area, that is pi r square, and the lower circular area, that is again pi r square. So if I take 2 pi r common, and we will be left with h plus r in, inside, so this will give me what? This will give me the formula of your total surface area, that is 2 pi r h plus r or r plus h. And the volume of your cylinder is pi r square. I hope that this thing is clear, where R is the radius and H is the height of your respective cylinder. Now talking about the sphere, your ball, your cricket ball, right, your football, all these are example of your sphere, right. And if I see a sphere, so we can see there is only curved part in a sphere, right. There is no circular upper endings, lower endings, nothing like that. So in case of sphere, we only have little surface area or we can say curved surface area and the curved surface area and the total surface area is same, right? The total surface area and the curved surface area is same and the volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. But in case of hemisphere, if we talk about, if I talk about the case of hemisphere, beta, so in along with this spherical part, along with this spherical part, we have this part also. So there comes a difference between the total surface area and the little curved surface area of your sphere. So over here we can write that the total surface area, right, is 3 pi r square. In this case, if the whole sphere has a surface area of 4 pi r square, so hemisphere is what? Half of sphere. So the surface area will be halved. So in case it has 4 pi r square, in this case it has 2 pi r square. Now for the total surface area, we will be including this particular circular region of your hemisphere. Right? So this particular circular region of your hemisphere will be included, which will result in 3 pi r square. And the volume is 2 by 3 pi r. Alright? The volume of the sphere comes out to be what? 2 by 3 pi r. All right. So now let's talk about the cone. Now cone basically have, if I have a right angle triangle, how is a cone formed? If I have a right angle triangle and if I rotate this from this particular holding this side, so this will form what? An imaginary cone sort of structure. Right? So this is how cone is formed. So basically cone have three parts. This will be turned as the radius. This will be turned as the height of the cone but this slant portion basically which is the hypotenuse in your right angle triangle will turn out to be what the slant height which is denoted by the letter L. Alright this will turn into a slant height which is denoted by the letter so this is how it is supposed to be done. The lateral surface area of your cone is pi r l. The total surface area is pi r l plus r, whereas the volume is 1 by 3 pi r square. Okay. So talking about the frustum of a cone. See how a frustum is made first of all. We have a cone. Alright. What I do, if I cut this cone from somewhere at any height all right so the upper part will result in a smaller cone again but the lower part will form a shape like this like some buckets if i talk about some sort of joker caps if i talk about how is this joker cap you might have seen some jokers wearing such a cap 
डोंट से नो नाउ मैम नो वी हैव नॉट सीन राइट सच अ कैप दिस इज अ जोकर कैप सो दिस इज अ एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फ्रस्टम एंड बेसिकली द फॉर्मूलाज फॉर फ्रस्टम इज सी एस एज पाए एल आर प्लस आर ऑल राइट द टोटल सर्फिस एरिया इज वॉट पाए एल कर्व सर्फिस एरिया वी एट द एरियाज ऑफ अपर सर्कल एंड द लोअर सर्कल एंड द वॉल्यूम ओवर हेयर इज वन बाय थ्री ओके लेट इज नॉट टॉक अबाउट द वॉल्यूम ओवर हेयर ऑल राइट वील चेक इट इन द लेटेस्ट सेक्शन वेन वी विल कम अपन okay so here we have what so the length again i told you that basically the slant height is the hypotenuse in the case of cone as well the l is the edge and how do we use to calculate the slant height the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle by taking the sum of what of the perpendicular and the base all right okay uh, let me just write on the formula here itself in case of you guys it will help The volume of frustum is equals to one by three pi h r one square plus r two square plus r one. This is the volume for the frustum of a cone. Clear till here? Okay. So this is a all together chart for you people to help you out to solve questions. Uh, just don't sit and mug up the formulas because that will be too much difficult and too much hectic for you. What I suggest is keep practicing the question and whenever you are practicing the question make sure that in each and every question you write down the formula first so whenever you do those things automatically the formula will come into play in your mind and you don't have to have to sit and mug up that it will anyhow will be you know inside your brain for no reason without even you know practicing to learn it so the first question here we have let us implement all these formulas that how according to question by question we can actually you know put up this particular formula in this particular question and how we actually solve it up so the very first question is three cubes each of volume 216 cm cube are joined end to end to form a cuboid in some of the question it is not given that it forms a cuboid it just says that three cubes are joined together to form a certain figure now it should be in your brain that if i keep one cube along with second cube along with third cube so the resultant figure which i will get so the resultant figure which i will be getting will be a cuboid so these are certain things which you have to imagine by your own self so what is saying that three cubes each of volume 216 means each of the cube has a volume of 216 216 and 216 all right i know that the volume of cube this is for cube students the volume of cube is equals to a cube the formula for the volume of cube is a cube right that means my 216 is equivalent to a cube 216 can be written down as 6 cube which is equal to a cube and from here the side of the cubes comes out to be 6 cm the side of the cube comes out to be what the side of the cube comes out to be your 6 cm now if i talk about for the next thing that is when all the three cubes are joined together to form a cuboid all right that means the height of the cuboid will be same as the side of the cube that will be 6 right if i talk about this figure if this is a cube like this so the height of the cube will be same as the side of the cube right and if i talk about the breadth of the cube right so the breadth of the cube will be again sa same as to the size of the cube the side of the cube will be same as that of the breadth of the cuboid and now if i talk about the height right now if i talk about the height of the cuboid so the side of the cube 1 plus side of the cube 2 plus side of the cube 3 so these three sides added up together and they form what they form a cuboid over here so basically if i talk about the whole thing for this cuboid thing so basically the ba the breadth if i talk about will be same as the side of the cube that is 6 cm the height of the cuboid will be same as the side but the length of the cube becomes 6 
plus 6 plus 6 that will give me what 18 centimeter tell me is this thing clear with everyone yes or no is this thing clear with everyone right so basically these are three cubes joined together end to end and they form what a cuboid so basically in this case the height will be 6 the breadth will be 6 but the length of the resulting cuboid will be 6 plus 6 plus 6 so this will turn out to be what this will turn out to be your 18 centimeter now if i talk about the total surface area if I talk about the total surface area of what of your resulting cuboid, so this will be what I am suggesting to write down the formula. This is 2 LB plus BH plus HL. So the total surface area in the case of this cuboid will be what? Will be 2 LB plus BH plus HL. So this will result into what beta 2? Length is what are 18, 18 into 6 plus 6 into 6 plus 6 into 18. I hope that this thing is clear till here, right? Three cubes together, each having a volume of 216. So what we did from this volume, we calculated the side of the cube. All right, and from this side of the cube, what we did, we actually just combined those three cubes and formed a cuboid. And after forming a cuboid, what it resulted into? It resulted into a cuboid. And the formula we have written that is 2 into LB, that is length into breadth, that is 18 into 6. And then we have 6 into 6, and then we have what? 18 into I hope that this thing is clear till here. Just let me know. See it till, till here and tell me. Is it clear till here? All right. Okay. Over here, we will be left with what? 2 into plus. Okay, so this is the thing which we will be getting by the end. Now add this thing up, that is 2. And in the bracket we are left with, uh, we have 108 plus 108 plus 36. We are left with 252. Alright, so what we have in the bracket 252 and we will double this number basically 2 into 252 will give you what 405504 five, centimeter square the units are compulsory they are important for you and basically it will result into what it will result into 504 centimeter square i hope that this thing is clear with everyone i hope this question is clear let's move forward to the next question what does the next question say is a vessel is in the form of a hemispherical bowl. So you can see a hemispherical bowl over here. This is the hemispherical bowl which we are talking about. Right. So basically there is a vessel which is in the form of a hemispherical bowl which is mounted by a cylinder. That means there is a bowl lower down and it is mounted by what a cylindrical on the upper side. What we have to find out the capacity the volume of this particular figure. So I know that the volume of figure, see, the volume of this whole figure, I can break this figure down into two figures. I can break this figure down into two figures. One is the hemispherical bowl and the other one is the cylinder. So that means the volume of figure will be equal to volume of cylinder plus volume of hemisphere. volume of cylinder plus volume of hemisphere all right so this will be the volume of this whole figure volume of cylinder is what pi r square h volume of hemisphere that is a down a portion 2 by 3 pi r cube this is what i'm suggesting you down to write down the formulas as soon as you do the question as along with you practice the question so that it becomes easier for you 
you can take pi r square common because the diameter over here right the diameter over here is 14 so the radius will be 7 students for the whole figure the radius of the cylinder is equal to that of the hemispherical ball so the radius will be same in both the cases and height of overall vessel c what i said that the radius of this hemisphere will be 7 and that of the cylinder will also be 7 if I talk about the radius, so only this is the radius or I can say that this is also the radius of the hemisphere. So the downer part is also the radius of the hemisphere, that means this is also 7. Right? Now if I talk about this whole length is, seven, uh, is 13 and this length is 7, so can I calculate the length of this particular cylinder? So the length of cylinder will be 13 minus 7, that will give you what? 6 centimeter, right? So, over here we get the radius and the length of the cylinder, all right. So, what we can to take, we can take pi r square common, we can take pi r square common, inside we will be left with h plus 1 by 3 r. We can take such things common when we know that both of them are same. Since from this figure, I know that the radius of your cylinder and the radius of your hemispherical ball is same. So, what I can take, I can take the radiuses as common. So, pi is here what? Pi is 22 by 7. Right. Radius is 7 into 7. Height is what student? Height of your cylinder. That is 6 plus 1 by 3 into I hope that this thing is clear with everyone, right? So, what we can do, we can subtract 7 and 7 here. So, what we are left with, let's see, we are left with 22 into 7 and in bracket we have 6 plus 7 by 3. Here till here. Right, now what do we have? 22 into 7 will give you what? 154. And over here we will take the LCM, right? And the LCM will come out to be 18 plus 7 divided by 3. So we are having 154 into you have 25. I hope this thing is clear. Sorted till here, we are just doing the calculation after that. So, what we are left with, students over here, we are left with 154 into 25, and this will give us what? 5 fours are 20, 25, 26, 27, 2, 5, 7, and then we have what? All right. So, we have 3850. divided by so we will be left with 1 2 8 0 point something so the final answer which we will be getting is 1 2 8 0 point something that will be in what that will be in centimeter cube because because the volume was asked from us i hope that this question is clear too let's move forward to the next now what does this question says see a lot of us might have seen the pen stands. Alright, basically what is a pen stand? There is a cubicle, cuboidal, whatever sort of uh, base and we hang up our pen there. So this is something what, but basically it's still here. Let me just draw it. Give me a second. Sorted now. See, now what I am discussing is this pen stand. So you can see that this pen stand, the stand is cuboidal and the pen have a conical tip. Like the pencils and the pen have the conical tip with it. So basically what does the stand have? The stand have conical depressions in it. Right. As you can see, these are the conical depression which the pen stand have. So I can just come, hang up my pen here and things are go good to go. But what do I have to calculate here? The volume of wood in the entire stand. So if I look closely, 
right if i look closely so basically there is a cuboid which have conical depression in them so when there is something which is coming out of something then the volume is done what the volume is subtracted from that particular figure all right when there is something which is coming out of the figure for example in this particular stand the base is cuboidal but the conical sections are depreciated they are just removed from this cuboidal box so what we have to do we do not have to add the volume up here we have to subtract how do we calculate the volume of entire stand so the volume of stand is calculated by how is calculated by cuboidal block subtracted by four of conical depression because this has four conical depression so this is what we are supposed to do that from this whole cuboidal box four conical parts are removed from this so the next thing which we have is the cuboidal block all right and it is made of wood of cuboid with four conical depression to hold pen the dimension of the cuboid are 15 10 and 3.5 so what will be the volume of cuboid students the volume of cu cuboid is length into breadth into height length is your 15 into 10 into 3.5 so this will become what 15 into 3.5 uh, 35 because 3.5 into 10 is what you are 35 so this will come out to be what this will come out to be 35 into 15 and this will come out to be what 525 cm so this is the volume of the whole cubical block this is the volume of this whole cuboidal block this this particular whole figure which we are having now but to calculate the remaining part we have to calculate the volume of cone as well right so if i only calculate volume of one cone that will be equals to 1 by 3 pi r square h and if i have to calculate the volume of four such cone that will be equal to 4 into 1 by 3 pi r square that is 4 into 1 by 3 into we have 22 by 7 what is the radius of the cone student the diameter of the depression is 1 so the radius will be 1 by 2 all right the diameter is given to us as 1 so the radius will be half of the diameter that will be 1 by 2 so that will be 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 and the height of the conical depression is given to us the depth the depth is basically what the depth is the height all right if i tell you that this is a conical depression and this is the depth it automatically means that that is the height of your given conical thing all right so this will be equal to what into 1.4 so this will result as nothing is uh, this will get cancelled at 0.2 Zero point two can be written as basically two by ten, right? So two and two will get cancelled out. So we are left with two, and this will get cancelled out. So we will multiply everything, and what we will be getting as volume of four cones, and that will be equal to what one point four six six centimeter. So this is the volume of four conical depression. Now, if I have to calculate what the remaining the remaining wood in the stand the remaining wood in the stand can be calculated by 525 cm cube that is volume of the cuboid students minus your 1.466 cm cube that is the volume of four conical depression so at the end what we will be getting we will be getting after subtraction as 520.53 cm so this is the remaining part of the thing of the pen stand basically which we can calculate i'll show you with the figure again see if i had this pen stand which is cuboidal in shape all right and if it had four conical depression 
okay that means this particular is removed this is not present in the pen stand which we have that wood is removed so the volume of that wood is removed right let's move forward to the next question the next question says that from a right circular cylinder so we have what we have a right circular cylinder over here with height 12 cm all right height is given to us as 12 cm and the radius is given to us as 5 cm a right circular cone of the same height and same base radius is removed find the volume see if something is getting removed from something so the volume has to come down for example again in this bottle all right in this bottle if i just pour out one glass of water all right if i just remove if i just as extract one glass of water or i can say few drops of water whatever amount of water from this volume so the volume of water in this particular cylinder will depreciate will decrease down for sure so over here what we have is from a right circular cylinder that from a cylinder what is done students basically a cone of same cylinder and same height is removed right i have to calculate the volume of the remaining part and the remaining part of wood will be this particular thing this particular volume will be the remaining volume so let's talk about the cylinder first all right let's talk about the cylinder first so for cylinder the height is 12 radius is 5 so the volume of the cylinder will be pi r square h that is 3.14 into radius square that is 5 square into c this particular volume is what we have to calculate right so this will give me what 3.14 into 25 into is it clear till here i hope it is multiply it and you will be getting what 942 cm cube this will be the volume of your cylinder now second case talking about the volume of your cone now if i switch to cone so the cone has the same height as that of the cylinder so the height of the cone becomes what 12 again it has the same radius as that of the cylinder so the radius of the cone becomes what 5 cm and if i talk about the volume student that is 1 by 3 pi r square we can again take common if we want to if we had to all right we could have taken common so this is equals to 1 by 3 pi that is 3.14 into radius that is again 5 square 25 and then we have 12 i hope that this thing is clear right okay so over here we will be getting what okay so this is 3.14 because see i could have taken 22 by 7 but i had to take 3.14 because that is what is asked in the question so when we have nothing to cancel up with 22 by 7 in the denominator so we will take 3.14 so this will result in your 25 into 12 okay that will give you 100 and uh, see 25 into 12 will give you 300 this will be cancelled out basically this will be cancelled out at 4 425 and this will be 314 cm now what we have to do we have to find out the remaining portion so the remaining portion will be equal to students volume of cylinder subtracted by volume of the volume of cylinder subtracted by a volume of cone the volume of cylinder will give out to be what was our 942 minus 314 which will give us uh, 628 cm cube so 628 cm cube will be the amount of volume which will be left after the removal all right the volume which will be left and for the total surface area i give you that as homework 
total surface area what does the total surface area comes out to be you have to do it calculate it and just write down the answers in the comment section you know the drill and i will be taking the name of the people who have given me the answer to homework question right okay let's move forward the next question if the volumes of two cones are in the ratio 1 is to 4 what is this saying that we have one cone and we have another cone all right what is given the volume of first cone is to volume of second cone is equals to 1 is to 4 the volume of first cone to the volume of second cone is equal to what 1 is to 4 what is the second thing given and the diameters are in the ratio 4 is to 5 that means d1 is to d2 is given as 4 is to 5 what we have to calculate the ratio of the height just note down one important point students whatever is the ratio of the diameter will be the ratio of the radius if it is given that the ratio of diameter is 4 is to 5 that means the ratio of radius will also be equal to 4 is to 5 all right if d1 is equals to d2 this implies that r1 is to r2 is also equal to 4 is to 5 okay all right we know that the volume of 1 by volume of 2 is equals to 1 by 3 by r square h upon 1 by 3 by r square h this is what is given the ratio of the volume so let us substitute the values in the formula for the volume so over here what we will be getting 1 by 3 1 by 3 pi and pi will get cancelled v1 by v2 is given as 1 by 4 which is equals to r square is 4 by 5 square and this is h by h right i hope this thing is clear till here now what we are having 1 by 4 will be equal to 4 square is 16 Five square is twenty-five, and then what we have? We have h by. Take it here, cross multiply. So this will become what? Twenty-five upon sixteen into four will be equal to h by h, which means height ratio will be equal to what? Twenty-five is to sixty. i hope that this thing is clear again so the ratio of the height of both those cones will be 25 is to 60 let's move forward what it is saying the surface area of a sphere is 2464 cm square that we have a sphere right all right so the surface area of the sphere so this is a sphere and the surface area of the sphere is 2464 and again we know that the surface area is same in the case of sphere that is your 4 pi r square and this is given to as what the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square and that is your 2 4 6 4 cm square now in the question it is saying that if the radius is doubled that if we do what if we double the radius then it is asking what will be the surface area of the new sphere all right for example for the older sphere let the radius be r for the new sphere it is saying what that the radius is double so basically what we have the radius as we have the radius as 2 r that is 2 into your radius all right the radius is doubled now it is asking see for this surface area the formula is 4 pi r square that means 2 4 6 is equals to 4 pi r square if i say for this particular hemisphere uh, this particular sphere this particular sphere where the radius of the sphere is doubled so the surface area will be again what 4 pi r square where r is now my what 2r the value of r becomes what the value of r becomes 2r so this will become what 4 pi 2r square which is equals to 4 pi 4r if i take this 4 outside 
so this will become 4 into 4 pi r square and I know that the volume of this 4 pi r square is 2464 so in place of this 4 pi r square I can do what I can write 2464 centimeter square that is 4 times into the original right so this will come out to be what got my point c there was a sphere whose surface area was 4 pi r square there is a new sphere now that surface area will be 4 pi r square but according to question it is said that the radius of the previous sphere is now doubled for the new sphere all right the radius for the previous sphere was r so the radius of the new sphere will be 2r so in the place of r for the second formula that is 4 pi r square we put up what we put up with r is equals to 2r so r is equals to 2r then we will take that 2 square 4 outside 4 pi r square again had that value of 2 4 6 4 over here because the radius has some relation of r and 2r so that's why we put up the same value multiplied it by 4 and there we got the answer you can try it again by taking that if the radius is you know three times if the radius earlier was r and now if the radius is 3r what will be the effect on the volume just calculate it and let me know all right let's move forward to the next question the dimension of a metallic cuboid so we have a metallic cuboid students and that particular cuboid has a dimension of something 100 into 80 into 60 all right that means length is equals to 100 breadth is equals to 80 and height is equals to 64 centimeter it is melted and recast see wherever dear students you see this word melted and recast that means what the volume of that particular thing will remain same for example we have done clay modeling when we were young we were kids we have done clay modeling so we used to take that same clay and mold it into different different shape for example a cat a dog a penguin or a whatnot a mango and whatnot whatnot right but what is same in that particular case is the amount of clay which we have used or we can say that the volume of clay which we have used so whenever it comes to the topic of recast and melting that means what the volume of both of those substances those articles those figures those solids will be same right so the le uh, length breadth and height is given and it is recast into a cube we have to calculate the surface area of the cube to find out the surface area of the cube we have to calculate what the wall or the sides first all right we know that the volume of cuboid will be equal to volume of cube that is length into breadth into height is equal to what a now instead of multiplying all this we will do prime factorization that is 100 into 80 into 64 equals to a cube 100 can be written as 250 225 5 into 5 80 can be written down as 240 20 2 10 2 and 5 and 64 can be written as 4 into 4 into now this will be equal to cube instead of multiplying everything what we did we just prime factorized it now we will make a pair of 3 and write it down that means what see 2 and 2 we can make one pair one group of 3 over here then we have 3 2's again then we have 3 5 and then we have 3 this is a cube so basically one I can write this down as 2 into 2 into 5 into 4 which will be equal to your a cube what we have done we have cubed rooted right we have cubed rooted and then we will get what 80 
so the side of the new cube will be equal to what 80 centimeter side of the new cube will be equal to what will be equal to your 80 centimeter now what we have to do for the next thing students we have to calculate the surface area and we are only given the surface area so you might be confused whether we have to take out the total surface area or the lateral surface area so students whenever there is only surface area given in the question you have to calculate the total surface area for the same the total surface area is equals to 6a square So three eight four double zero centimeter square will be what? Three eight four double zero centimeter square will be the surface area, the total surface area for your. All right, let's move forward. Next one, what is it saying? How many spherical solid bullets can be made out of a solid cube? So now we have a solid cube. All right, and after this, the solid cube is melted, and it is. Converted into small, small spherical bullets. Alright. What is it saying that uh, the edge measurement of your cube is 44. And each bullet being 4 cm in diameter, that is 2 cm in radius. Again, we know what that for how many these uh, bullets are made, but the volume of all these bullets will be equal to that of the single cube. What we know is the volume of cube will be equal to volume of all bullets. So, let us assume that we made the number of these bullets be x or n you can say. What can we assume that the number of bullets, the spherical bullets, the number of spher uh, spherical bullets which are formed out of these cube be n. So, what I can say that a cube is equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube into I hope that this is clear with everyone right no issues in this okay a cube is what 44 into 44 into 44 take everything over here so this will become what 3 over here 22 by 7 then 7 will go up 22 into 2 into 2 into 2 is equal to n. Tell me if this thing is clear with everyone. Right? What we are said that the volume of your cube will be equivalent. The volume of the cube will be equivalent to that of your things. Okay. So, 22 and 44 on 2, 2 and 2 will get cancelled out. 2 with this on 22 and 2 with this on 11. Right? Nothing left in the denominator. In the numerator, we have 11 into 44 into 7 threes are 21. Which will be equal to the number of spherical bullets which we are forming. So, this is equal to what? 44 into 11 will give you 484. And 484 into 21 will give you what, beta? This will give you 4 to the 8, 16, 1. So, the n will be equal to 2500 something. That will be 2541 something something it is coming. So, it will be equal to 254. Right? So, I hope that this thing is clear with everyone, that this lecture is clear with everyone and you will be having no problem in doing any of the questions now. So, with this we come to an end of this lecture and I hope that all the formulas and the type of questions are clear with you people. So, thank you so much for attending this lecture. See you guys in the next class. Children, take care. Have a great time ahead. Thank you so much.